Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, one thing that I just want to point out is every third week into every month is going to be a M Creator tutorial or a tutorial for that matter. Um, I'll be focusing on M Creator tutorials until I run out of suggestions or ideas or things to record. However, uh, it's a designated bonus content that is on every third week of the month. So. Um, yeah, uh, just to let you guys know about that. Um, also, uh, I want to just let you guys know that this idea was suggested by a individual that has uh, subscribed to my channel. Uh, if you want to check out his channel, I will leave the link down uh, in the description, so definitely check out that, and thank you to him for suggesting it. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna have to do is we're going to be creating the mob right off the bat, and this will all, um, be an alien and uh, we need to first import our texture so go to new and uh, import other texture and then what you want to do is select your workspace wherever you store your files I have a texture that we'll be using it and that is under tutorials done plan planned and custom mob boss and we'll go to this and we'll import the mob skin. You can get the mob skins uh, from Minecraft's uh, directory. So you can extract it from the uh, jar file and get some templates. All right, so we're now gonna create our mob boss. And what we need to do is uh, select the name of the mob. So we're just gonna say alien. We're going to select the type of uh, texture file it is. Uh, this indicates that um, what texture uh, basically map that we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using zombie for this one. And uh, texture for mob, we can import that. And I'm going to leave all this the same because when we selected the zombie texture, it adjusted it to what it needed to be. Uh, the this is for the spawn eggs. I'm just going to disable that for now, but you can change the color and it would be cool if you use paint on net. And uh, I have used it before and then imported the hues for the uh, specific colors used in it. And it looks really good that way. Um, all right, so that's that. And then this is your mob boss bar. You want to enable this for the mob boss and um, you want progress and select any color you want. There's different uh, different uh, tiers. I'm gonna go with notched uh, 20. Now this is if you want armor, but I'm not gonna use that, just click next. And uh, we're going to select it as mob because it is going to be aggressive mob. Creatures, passive, and water animal, I'm not sure, maybe fish or something in the future. And we're just gonna select mob. Unidentified, I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, not entirely sure what that means, but it's something new. I haven't played around with it. Uh, Illager, I guess it's properties of like certain attributes, so just leave it undefined if you don't uh, want to inherit something like that. Rideable, if it's uh, a rideable mod or mob or not, like a pig um, or a horse. Uh, attack strength, uh, this is how many hearts it will damage the player. I think it's measured in full hearts, but um, we're just going to disable that. And mob movement speed, I'm going to just set that to 3, but we're going to disable... I think I disabled this when I was testing. Yeah, disable that. And we're just going to have uh, the mob speed set to point zero or 0 0.3. So the health, uh, you're going to want to adjust this quite a bit. Um, now for a good boss fight, uh, I think the ender dragon is like a thousand or two thousand or something like that for health. I'm going to set it to about 400. Uh, we want to select the items that it will drop upon death. The first slot is the most common one, and the second one is the rare drop. So that's what those two slots are. Experience dropped. You're also going to want to drop or um, adjust this. Uh, the average for an Ender Dragon for the first one is, I think, like 2,000 or something. 
but it's only like 500 after, so I'm gonna set it to a thousand. And we want to select the living sound, the hurt sound, and the death sound. I'm just going to use uh, Blaze uh, that's already implemented. I would suggest making your own uh, sounds and stuff uh, in the future, and it would be um, more unique if you were to use your own audio effects and stuff for the sounds. But uh, Mob Hurt, and where is it? Death, there we go. All right, so that's all imported, we're good to go. Uh, particle effects, um, I'm going to leave that. Uh, we will get into events in a few minutes. Uh, now it goes, th this is the most important part, this is uh, where the AI is going to be uh, telling the mob what to do. So we're going, how this basically works is the top one is the, the most, the, the one with the most priority. So we're going to layer it as we want the priorities to happen. So right now we want to make the mob aggressive and that's the first thing that we want to do so we'll target any player or a mob or anything like that so that's important we also want it to leap at the direction uh wandering around is pretty good i'm going to set that to one i'm just going to leave the default um we want it to look around and swim in water so it doesn't drown so those are very important features as well and I'm um, just going to look over combat quickly and let's see, um, attack with melee factor. So we want to basically uh, set this to... Um, see uh, we're gonna leave it to the default I think and we're going to also attack the player which is way at the bottom here player and multiplayer so this uh, the multiplayer MP is um, for like online and I think the player is just for regular players so this will um, only nearby we want to disable those uh, unless you want them to attack nearby but I'm just gonna disable them and attack only in in sight so in sight only and uh, set that to nearby so all right so that's good that's um, what the code I'm going to be using for the AI and basically what's happening is it's going to be um, aggressive it's going to attack um, with a speed and uh, chase it after lost in sight and it's going to attack uh, nearby only entities player and player multiplayer and that's basically to target the player only uh, leap basically it's just going to attack if it can do that and then it's going to wander around and swim in water and then also just kind of do that mob look around thing. So AI base is uh, not recommended but uh, avoid that if you can. Everything's pretty much good to go so let's just head over to here. Now if you want it to spawn naturally you can. I'm going to disable this um, because we don't really want this uh, boss to respawn or just spawn randomly. It would be a really pain to actually kill it every time it decided to spawn, especially if it spawned in a group of three. So we're just going to disable all that, but um, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can just go through all that. So the mob's created. Uh, now we need to um, create a block. We're going to be summoning it through um, something like you would do with a snow golem. Uh, it's pretty simple to do it that way. Uh, we're just going to select our first texture, which we haven't imported yet. And we're going to go here, and then we're going to go markings. And this is going to be our head. And we're just going to select all that. Um, pretty much don't need to touch any of the settings here.
I'm going to give it a GUI name and let's call it head block. Uh, you can name it yours, whatever you want. I'm just going to name it for the tutorial. I'm going to also select the, I don't know which one. Uh, I'm going to select ground and uh, I'm going to make it sound like slime and I'm going to disable that and uh, that looks good. Just uncheck uh, affected by a silk touch and I'm going to have axe actually shovel would be more appropriate and what else yeah that looks pretty much good just uh, make the block uh, we're just basically using this as a placeholder block anyways so that's all good now we need to create the body and uh, we are going to be testing for these two blocks um, with the uh, head block when it's the head block is placed so we're just going to create something like this leave all pretty much do the exact same thing you don't need to do anything fancy and give it a name, body block for the tutorial, ground, and we're gonna disable that, select that to shovel, and select this to slime, set that to zero, next, 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 and next. Okay, so now that we got all that in, we can finally create a procedure um, to summon the boss so this isn't too too complicated we just need to test if the body blocks are below the head block and if so then um, basically uh, remove the blocks and then summon the entity so that's all we need to really do so we're going to use an if statement to test uh, for the block locations we're gonna put the block equals uh, operator there. We're gonna select the block type. And then we also want to get the block that uh, we want. And we're gonna set the Y coordinates to math. Um, math minus one. So y minus, then you're going to need a number component and set it one. And we're going to duplicate this twice because we want to test for both blocks. And then what you want to do is select your body block and select your other body block. And that's pretty much good to go. Uh, set that to y minus 2 though rather than minus 1 and it will test for both blocks now and now what we want to do is if it is true we want to remove all of the blocks so we're just going to copy that over and delete that and stick that there then we want to copy this and paste that here and nope that's not gonna work oh dear what did i do <laughs> i have no idea what just happened there everything's all over the place oh boy um basically you want to remove the main block though why are all these components all over the place when they're really not that's weird it must be a bug I did something I wasn't supposed to do that's funny. <laughs> There's like a little marker right there for some reason. Alright, um, so we're just going to leave it as it is and we're going to edit this a little bit. We're just going to have it at the Y coordinates and that will delete the block that it's testing. Or the block that is testing. There we go, we fixed it. <laughs> Alright, uh, so basically you want to, yeah, see that? I don't know why that marks there. I thought it was on my screen at first, and I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> all right, so basically we're testing for both blocks. We're gonna remove both, or remove all the blocks that we have placed, if it's tested. And 
then what we want to do is summon I always need to figure out what tab it's under you think it would be under entity because you're actually spawning the entity but I think it's under like what was it world management or world data somewhere up there uh, not under world data so it's under world management so you want to grab spawn at and then the coordinates and I would suggest sl selecting Y minus um, two and that will spawn it on the block that the main the last body block was I didn't do that and the mob kind of jumps down um, like falls down a little bit and that's okay it's not too harmful to it um, all right, so now we want to create a procedure to, or add the procedure to one block added to the head block. And this will basically um, check for those two blocks first. And once it's checked, it will spawn the entity after removing the blocks. So that's why it's important to add it to one block added. You can also do one block placed. Uh, both will work, I think. Uh, I haven't tested it otherwise. Um, we're going to try this one because it has a little more options so uh, item stack block entity and a few others so all right so that's good we're going to compile that and the next thing that we need to do is wait for this to compile we need to create um, I don't know what we need to create. I am a lost procedure. There we go. And we're going to um, create its attacks. Now this is um, my own personal idea. I suggested it to the individual that suggested the um, the idea for a mob boss. And uh, I was going over some of the attacks and stuff, like just random things like um, the... Um, what do you call it? Like things that you can do with uh, M Creator, and uh, you can strike lightning, spawn t uh, prime TMT, and a whole bunch of other stuff that uh, is built into the procedures. So first, what we need to do is actually uh, adjust and make the damage for uh, the mob to actually attack because we set the damage to zero. So we're just going to uh, set the uh, to check for the difficulty and if it's at difficulty we are going to uh, determine the damage that it will basically provide the uh, player so we're going to do that so we're going to set these all to different ones so normal and easy so once you have done that uh, the last procedure that you want to create uh, that's basically uh, has that procedure that we just made is for the damage that it will provide the player based on difficulty now in Minecraft um, the mobs are the damage the mobs do is based on difficulty so that's why we set it that way and it's very similar to how uh, either the wither or ender dragon uh, provides damage so uh, we're going to now create the attacks, uh, like uh, special abilities. Now the easiest way to go about doing this is um, setting it up this way. I've tested it some other ways and it didn't work out that well. Uh, either the attacks didn't work or um, it was only doing one particular attack. And uh, this also allows you to do random attacks uh, the way that I'm going to be setting it up. So um, you can either follow along or just skip this step and just have a really uh, hard entity to kill, which is uh, totally cool too. But um, I'm going to be showing you how to add attacks now. So what we want to do is uh, get a random operator. And what we want to do is add this and equals or greater than and then the random operator there. And 
we want to do is now select a number and set this to zero. And we want to set this to 0.5 or any value that is a one and under. And we're gonna set this to 0.5 and then set this to 0.9. And we want to change the operator uh, right before the um, random event to greater than because we don't want it to double up the events. So we're going to select greater than. Um, I think I'm going to set this to nine though. Um, I'll just leave it. And uh, we're gonna duplicate this one more time and we're gonna set this to uh, greater than eight. So we need to greater than, this will basically do it a value before um, 8.0 and it won't double up on the um, attacks. So that's quite important. And uh, let's see, what else do we wanna do? We wanna actually add the attacks. So we're gonna strike lightning. That's quite important. So we're gonna strike it a few times. And we're gonna change the coordinates of the lightning. Now the coordinates of the lightning is determined by the position of the mob. Uh, all these attacks will be uh, according to the position. So we're gonna duplicate the operator a little bit, uh, four times to be exact, and we're gonna add Z coordinates and X coordinates. And we want to add that, add minus and add plus and add minus. And then we just need to duplicate this, set it to I'm going to set it to eight and I'm going to pop or duplicate this first a few times and oops, what am I doing here? Okay, so we're going to duplicate that and duplicate that and put that in. So that's the lightning strike attack is all set up. Uh, now what we need to do is create the other attacks that will happen. Uh, you might want to adjust the, the position of the lightning strike. I've noticed while making this tutorial that it will actually still damage eight blocks away. So um, you might want to uh, space it out a little bit more. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is summon an entity. Uh, we're gonna go with a wither, uh, just because it is a little bit difficult to kill those. And um, where is it? Or not a wither, a uh, wither skeleton. I don't know why they named them very similar things. You would have thought they would have just called it something different. All right, so wither skeleton, and that's good. We're only gonna spawn one of those. And the last thing that we want to do is uh, explode. So we're going to, uh, oh, this is particles. We don't want that. Uh, All right. Um, yeah, I, did they remove? Maybe it's in a different place. So we're gonna delete that. Uh, would it be under world management? Explode. So this would be a quick way of actually exploding um, some things. Um, we're gonna test it this way. I haven't actually tested it this way, so we can test it as we're doing it. And um, I'm gonna set the power to default. It's just going to be random. It's gonna also be really rare for the explosion to happen. Well, rarer than most of the other things. So we're gonna compile that and then we're gonna hop in game and test it. 
and um, see basically all the different attacks and stuff and make sure everything works well. And the last thing that we want to do though is set the when block or when mob is collides with player, we want to set the damage to that. And when mob hurt, we want to set the attack abilities. So that's basically all you need to do with the mob events here. Click next and leave the AI the same and continue and just make sure that your event is there so that's good and uh, we can finally test this so I have um, spawned on this island I don't think uh, alright so we need these to begin with but I don't know if I actually should do it here this is quite a tiny area to try doing that we could go to one of these islands, but there's mainland over here, so we'll do that over there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll head to the main island just because there's more room to uh, basically do a, a boss fight. So we'll just uh, test it over here. And we're going to place down these two blocks first, and then, yep, it summons it perfectly. So it says alien at the top there. And I'm just going to gear up a little bit, grab a diamond sword, some arrows, and we don't really need those, okay so we're going to put on the armor, and I just want to see how difficult it is to actually kill this creature. So we're going to go over here, we're going to set our game mode to survival, and he's already moving quite fast, so we'll aim for him. Okay, so it did strike some lightning, and some more lightning, there's a big field fire now. So TNT happened, but it looks like the TNT didn't actually um, happen correctly, yeah he's walking on air, so the blocks aren't registering. We're gonna have to change that. All right, now we got a wither. Okay, that really hurts. It's because it's on normal. And I just caught myself on fire. And I'm dead. All right, yeah, I, saw, I forgot to set my uh, spawn point too. So we'll head back over there. And it's over this direction. We'll set our spawn point this time. <laughs> Look at the destruction we've caused. Bunch of fire all over the place. So the only block that actually registered for block damage was that one... Um, that we uh, basically got killed by and that's not good so we're going to gear up a little bit more and we're going to change that uh, before we basically finish the episode and test it the way that I have tested it prior and um, I'm just going to show you basically how to set uh, proper explosions and stuff I'm just going to add a bunch of protection onto this just to make sure that it is possible to defeat it with armor and we're gonna grab that and go in here and I'm gonna want better swords so I'm gonna go sharpness uh, five where is it should have little different icons or something like uh, characters of the enchantment on it that'd be pretty cool Alright, so that's good, and uh, we just need to gear up, and I'm actually going to save the, um, or create my spawn point first, and then what I'm going to do is create a quick tab, um, 
creative tab uh, selection. So I just created that. It's over here now, so I can just easily grab that. And what we're gonna do is just put all this on. It should be somewhere over there still. So let's go take this on and see how it easy, easy it is to... Okay, so it does help a little bit. However, okay, yeah. So blocks are definitely not being broken properly. We do have a little more protection than normal. Okay, yeah, so it is um, pretty difficult to destroy, especially with the explosions happening right where you are. Um, not recommended with a sword, but it does drop iron blocks, so that's good. And there's a whole bunch of destruction everywhere around here. So, I mean, there's a little bit of block damage being done, but there's not a whole bunch. And uh, we can fix that now, so let's do that and then we'll test it some more. So we're gonna open up the um, procedures for attacks, and there's an alternate way to actually do explosions. So we're just gonna remove the explosion, and we're going to go with um, spawn at, and there is one that I've been using. Uh, it was the first way I was testing uh, this, but we're just going to for demonstration purposes, uh, have it spawn prime TNT. Where is it? I think it's at the top, actually. So we're gonna set prime TNT, or TNT primed, and at the coordinates, uh, you might wanna uh, set the coordinates to minus and plus eight, like we did up with the lightning. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just adjust this a little bit and we're going to uh, summon the, so summon it this way. All right, so we're back in game and uh, we're going to set our game mode to creative and we're gonna get rid of some of this. We're just gonna reuse our armor and we can get rid of that and this and that and that and we're gonna select our head block and two those blocks and we're going to set our game mode back to zero and I just want to see if this actually works in survival it should all right so right off the bat it decides to attack you and spawn prime TNT and strike more lightning and I'm really on fire right now and I'm dead and he sees me again <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't find our sword. I don't actually have a sword on me right now. I'm just running around like a madman. <laughs> Where's the sword? Ah, getting chased. We'll eventually find it. Unless it was blown up or burned. There it is. No. Yep, there it is. Okay. And can we get me? And a wither. Oh my god. All right, so you might want to make him immune to fire. Because, I mean, it, it works beneficially because he's actually getting damaged by the Prime TNT, but on the other side of it, he's actually spawning a lot more lightning and stuff. So you might want to separate the lightning strikes by 8. That seemed to work good before. And um, for the TNT, I would have it separated by 8 too, just so it's not spawning it in numbers like that. I'm just getting struck by lightning. I'm not even getting attacked by him. And that was lightning. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, it would be easier with a, so just, yeah, my sword's been blown up, so I, I'm not really able to do too many attacks right now. Uh. All right. So yeah, without uh, anything other than that, um, 
that's basically how you can create a really simple mob it's not too complex um, uh, if you're going for a different type of mob, uh, you generally won't want to add attacks or anything like that, um, like special ability attacks, but uh, you will probably want to adjust the damage according to the difficulty. Whoa, that's a lot of withers. Or oh, wither skeleton, jeez. Is he dead yet? He might be, I don't see that boss bar anymore. So definitely check out the um, channel that suggested it and uh, next uh, month we're going to be doing another tutorial. Um, I believe we're going to be talking about how to create, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not going to actually um, set myself up to be off schedule. So uh, definitely just tune in um, next month for another M Creator tutorial. and. Um, other than that, that's all there is to make a custom mob. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching my video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that little silver bell for notifications. You can also go to my Google Plus page. I use that as a feed for all my new videos that I publish. If you want to go a little bit further in supporting me, uh, you can also go to my website and do a one-time donation on the donation page, or you can subscribe to me on Patreon and, um, and get content earlier than anyone else on YouTube. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, definitely comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your questions or comments. And uh, if I don't get back to you right away, then I might be a little bit busy at the moment, but I will do my best to get back to uh, as many people as I can, as with uh, the time that I do have. Uh, thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you next time.